When you think of landmarks here in Utah, what's the first one to come to your mind? For many, probably the Great Salt Lake. Right, well, with hotter summer months and a prolonged drought, the lake may be losing some of the features that makes it great. ABC 4's Northern Utah correspondent Kate Garner tells us what a shrinking lake could mean for our health, economy, and wildlife. For many, a day at the lake is calming. Well, I, I would say it's in really bad trouble right now. For scientists, years of research on the lake isn't so calming. What we're doing to Great Salt Lake uh, is going to have, is already having impacts on, uh, on bird life, uh, impacts on, on the, the greater environment. To understand what's going on, we need to start where the lake starts. This is the end of the Bear River. So the Bear River is about 350 plus miles. This is the Bear River Migratory Bird Refuge. And what's so significant about the Bear River is it provides two-thirds of all the water input into the Great Salt Lake. Before dumping into the lake, the river usually provides the refuge with about 30,000 acres of wetlands. These provide habitat for hundreds of species of birds. About a third of all migratory birds in the western United States spend some of their time uh, in Great Salt Lake, either nesting or feeding. This summer, the refuge had under 5,000 acres. Which means less water, less habitat for migratory birds, less feeding, nesting, resting habitat. The impact is then felt further downstream. By not having the water that we need, we weren't able to put any water into the upper Great Salt Lake as we usually do. We did break a record this year. We were the lowest we've ever seen historically. What do record low water levels look like? If I were standing here on a normal year, I'd be 10 feet underwater. That may not sound like much, but at the Great Salt Lake State Park, vast stretches of muddy beach show the reality. This lake is normally about 1,500 square miles. It is about 930 square miles now, so we've lost almost half of the volume of the lake. Researchers from Weber State University are studying different elements of the lake, including naturally occurring mercury levels. So as we continue forward, if our Junes and Julys start to be warmer than they were in the past, we'll see more, or I think that we could see more mercury cycling into the food web earlier in the summer and spring than we have before. The lake isn't home to fish, so people won't have to worry about increased mercury. But researchers believe that when levels increase in brine shrimp, they can increase in the birds that eat them. And then can affect things like how many eggs they lay, how many eggs hatch from those, and even the survival of the young. And if they're already struggling because of lack of food, it's too hot, then you add on something like increased mercury concentrations, it's almost like a triple or double whammy on their reproductive success. It's not just the birds. As the lake dries, scientists worry for the health of Utahns as well. I wrote a comparison between Great Salt Lake and a famous case of uh, lake decline in Central Asia called the Aral Sea. And there, there are terrible cases of uh, human illness as a consequence of exposure to some of the things that were coming out of the Aral Sea. A drier lake may mean worse air quality and less snow in the Wasatch Mountains. That has implications because not only does it affect the ski industry, but it also affects the inflow of water into the lake in the spring because the snow melts and feeds into the rivers that feed the lake. So it's this feedback loop of us affecting the lake, the lake affecting us, um, particularly through the lens of water. Reporting from the Great Salt Lake, Cade Garner, ABC4 News. Wow, thank you, Cade. Researchers tell us that the brine shrimp population may also decline as water levels drop and salt levels increase. This could have negative effects on the brine shrimp industry, which brings in millions of dollars to Utah every year.